Hey guys, this is Chris Kermis, and today I'm on the penultimate journey of this trip, heading towards the city of Hamadan. A city of around 600,000 people is believed to be one of the oldest in Iran. We'll take a roundabout route there today, heading by the natural beauty of the Al Sadar caves. Okay, let's enter the cave. Before finishing the day in Hamadan itself. Come with me as we near the end of this epic journey. Just stopping off for fuel on the way. It's quite a long old drive to the caves. Quite excited to see this cave though. It looks absolutely beautiful. Supposedly it's the longest caves in the world where you take a boat through. After a fair old drive, we're approaching the cave. The landscape opens up into these incredible endless flat plains. Very, very different yet again. So, finally made it to the area of the cave. There's quite a lot going on here. I think they get a lot of tourism here, at least from local tourists visiting. There's all sorts of restaurants, little bazaar area. I can see that we're approaching the cave entrance. Gotta say, I've seen more convincing cave entrances in my life. Okay, let's enter the cave. That was a pretty good experience doing that cave. It's really, really beautiful in there. But a word of advice if you're gonna come here, don't sit at the front. It seems so appealing, you sit at the front, you get the best views, but you really have to work. You're expected to uh, basically help with powering the thing, and it's hard work. I got off after the first stage, my legs were like jelly. At this point, we made the trip back to Hamadan and arrived as the sun started to set. There was quite a heavy police presence around the center, along with the fear that a bigger protest could start, as it had in Kermanshah the previous night. At the time, at least, the protests usually started at sundown or after. Everything felt on edge and we decided just to head back to the hotel and see Hamadan in the relative safety of the morning. And so with that, welcome to the streets of Hamadan. We're just walking now up to Imam Mohammadi Square, the main square of the city. And this is where they sell the LED lights that are so popular here. Actually, less LED lights on here than some of their customers. They're in the center now, and this is the edge of the bazaar. This part is the gold bazaar, jewelry, gold, all that sort of stuff. Still quite quiet at this time of day. I guess it gets more bustling in the evening times. This is the main square, Iman Hominy Square. It's a beautiful old buildings here. So just by the main square here, we've got the tomb of Esther and Mordechai. Actually a Jewish site with some interesting history. Let's go take a look. So who were Esther and Mordechai? Well, Mordechai was the Jewish counselor of Zaraxis, the son of Darius the Great, who we've heard a bit about in these travels. And Mordechai suggested Esther as a wife for Zaraxis, and she became one of his wives and queen for a while. It's really quite a doorway to get in here, this big stone, small doorway. And is there still a Jewish community in Iran? Ah, today, just today, one family is Jewish of Hamadan. Just eight people in Hamadan? Eight people. Wow. Tehran, Shira, Esfahan, Kermanshah, Yaz, many Jewish. Okay. I wouldn't have thought there were as many Jewish people yeah, in yeah, Iran. Yeah, it... yeah. Here we have Persian on the wall, but then also Hebrew, the Ten Commandments of Moses. An interesting little sight there with a rather pushy caretaker who let us in, asking for a tip all of the time. And then when I gave him a tip, it wasn't enough, so we asked for some more tip, which he didn't get because I gave him a very fair tip as it was. Anyway, nice to see. Now we'll head back into the old bazaar. Wow. It's the real local life out here. There's no tourist souvenirs or anything like that. This is real stuff that people want to buy. Stepped into the area of the bazaar for clothing now. All sorts of bright colors all around. So the Jama Mosque of Hamadan is very, very old. It's been renovated and redone many, many times in its history. But this is certainly the site of a former Zoroastrian temple before the time of Islam. Nowadays, it looks very, very much the typical Iranian style. Beautiful. It's very simple on the inside. 
carpet, the mirab behind me, which is tiled. The rest is open brickwork, including the dome itself above. And below the carpet here, we see the origins of what this used to be, where the pillar was from the former fire temple. Of course, this place has outgrown its use as the Jama Mosque, the Friday Mosque. The city's too big for that now. So the new Jama Mosque is elsewhere in the city center. But this remains a fascinating part of history. And again, the wonderful history of Hamadan shining through. We walk out the side of the bazaar there into another caravanserai located within the bazaar. This caravanserai is turned into the carpet bazaar too. All the buildings around here are all carpet sellers. And now we step over the street to another caravanserai linked from the other part of the bazaar. And for anyone who doesn't know or hasn't seen my last videos, a caravan sarai is a little bit of history of the Silk Road. It's where the old trade caravans used to stop by. They would leave their animals in the middle, they'd sleep on the sections above, and they'd set up shop temporarily below. So I'm quite happy just to be stopping off for a cup of tea in this former caravan sarai. There's a little tea shop just by me here. I'm really impressed with Hamadan as a city. It really struck me as being a beautiful city pretty much as soon as I saw the center here. I was a little worried that I wouldn't really be able to get to do much sightseeing in Hamadan today, but it's been good exploring in the morning. A lot uh, safer than doing it later in the day. So we'll do the sightseeing in the morning and early afternoon, get back to the hotel at a reasonable time, and uh, yeah, get back before there's any of the trouble in the streets, which obviously I want to avoid. So I walk out of one caravanserai here behind me, and there's another one straight ahead. So this one we've just been in where I've just had tea. This is the Gulshan caravanserai, probably the most important in the city. And the uh, one just over the road here, let's take a look at now. This caravanserai is known as the Sharifir caravanserai. It's half shops and half storage for the local traders nowadays. And stepping a little further into the leather part of the bazaar. Pretty much all shoes down here so far. We're heading on now to some ruins just near the center. Don't really know much about it, but I'll tell you a little more when we get there. So during this trip, we've seen a lot of the history of the Iranian royal dynasties, the influence they've had on the country over the years. But this, these ruins here present an even longer view than that. These ruins are from the Median people and their palaces. They ruled the country from about 700 BC for about 150 years. And it was Arian tribes coming together to gain control. They were actually defeated by Cyrus the Great, the first ruler of the Achaemenid dynasty. And this is the best excavated part of the site so far. It's known that there's about seven palaces here, but this part we see is actually just normal people's housing. Houses, baths, this sort of thing. And this really shows the history of Hamadan right here. While it's not the prettiest site to come and visit, it's certainly some rich, rich history from back at the very dawn of the Iranian dynasties. And just in the grounds of the archeological site, we have another site completely unrelated. This is the Stephen Gregory Church. This was built in around the 17th century and it's thought that it was built by Armenians who needed a church at the time. And one thing I noticed walking into here is it's a much calmer, simpler space than the Orthodox Armenian churches that we saw back in Isfahan. There's simple paintings on the wall. That was a real nice walk this morning around this central area. We're gonna get in the car now and head out to the south of the city, go to a restaurant for lunch. Have some more lovely, delicious, traditional Iranian food while I still can before I leave. So we've come out to the south of the city, way off the tourist trail here, outside of the ring road, to this place. Looks like a fast food place, but they actually have a seating area upstairs. And supposedly they do really good stew. So I want to try some Iranian stew that I haven't tried yet while I'm here. It's actually quite hard to find a stew in this city. This city is very much kebab land. Kebab is really the most common thing in a lot of places, but Reza, of course, knows a good place we can come for Iranian stew. So this is one particular one I've not tried yet, and I've been wanting to try for some time. This is called Orma Sabzi. So there we go, this very thick, distinctive green sauce. And this is vegetables with oil, with beans, and with lamb. It looks and smells absolutely delicious. So it's about time we can finally give this a try. Mmm. Oh, wow. Mmm. Oh, that does not disappoint. Vegetables really, really coming out strong. There's loads of green in there. It tastes like spinach to me. I'm not quite sure what it is. Then these lovely soft chunks of lamb just fall apart in your mouth. A little tiny greasiness to it, but not too much there. Just delicious. 
the beans there are adding this nice different texture to it, almost a little bit of a crunch, they're not just cooked to oblivion. Mmm, mmm. Oh, the flavour is just beautiful. Wow. Mmm. At least three chunks of lamb in that, and it's just so, so meaty. The fat just rendered out. This beautifully tasty, fall apart in your mouth lamb. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yet yeah, another delicious Iranian dish. All right, really enjoyed that. That was an absolutely delicious stew. So. Now, nicely filled up, we're going to head back, not to the centre, we're done with the centre now, we're not going to risk going back there later, sort of evening time. We're going to go to a couple of sites around the centre and then call it a day. And this behind me is the tomb of Avastina. So Avastina was a famous poet here in Iran, but also so much more than that. He was a philosopher, mathematician, and also became known worldwide as the father of modern medicine. And in the middle of the park here by the tomb, you've got this display of famous people from Hamadan in history. It's a nice little park, this. It's very much Hamadan style. You find like the most wonderful, quiet places in the middle of what is effectively a huge roundabout. Guys here just sitting, playing backgammon in the shade. It's super chilled. It's really cool. And in this beautiful shrine is the tomb to the grandson of the seventh Imam. It's really grand in there. It's done in a more modern style, I understand, from after the Islamic Revolution. You see in the detailing, the almost glass stalactites that just look beautiful hanging from the ceiling, and the amazing detailing on the dome there. Completely different from the older style, but beautiful in the way it is. This grand chandelier hanging above the tomb itself. And back in this lovely green space now, just over the road from the hotel where I'm staying, we have the tomb of Baba Tahe. Baba Tahir was a famous Iranian poet who lived in the 11th century. It's quite a grand and beautiful structure behind, particularly in this calm space with busy roads surrounding. So you're wondering where all those neon lights go from earlier in the video? Well, this is where. Wow, what a place. <laughs> wow. And this delicious delight here is not just saffron, this is saffron with melon and tropical fruits. This lovely colourful deliciousness right here. Oh, I love the ice cream here, it's so good. Mmm. Oh wow. The tropical fruits reminds me of the tropical fruit bubble gum I used to have as a kid. That's intense. Oh, this is this is so thick, this melon ice cream. It's like elastic. I've not had ice cream like this in Shiraz. Mmm. Fantastic. Then we got this thick, elastic -y take on saffron ice cream. Oh. Mmm. Beautiful saffron flavours always. I would have thought I'd be bored of saffron for now. There's so much saffron here in Iran, but it never gets old. It's just delicious. So there you go. Everyone raves on about Italian gelato. Maybe they should be talking about Iranian ice cream. Beautiful stuff. And as the sun starts to set over this calm space in Hamadan, I'm going to wish farewell to this city. I'll be on the road again for one final time tomorrow, heading back to Tehran. A couple of nights and I'm leaving Iran. This epic road trip complete. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, don't be shy with that thumbs up button. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments below. And please subscribe if you haven't already. There's plenty more content coming. Hope to see you next time, guys.